Glory to Jesus Christ, Yoshua HaMashiach, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I was reading the first chapter of Philippians, verses 9 to 11. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, unto the glory and praise of God. When I read this, brothers and sisters, I thought it was interesting because the question was posed in the Bible concerning how should we pray to the Lord? And a prayer was given but we also see that in his prayers, Paul is dealing with certain aspects of Christian life and he desires to pray so that his brothers and sisters be strengthened in those areas. And therefore we look in verse nine, Paul is praying that their love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. And so we are called, brothers and sisters, to love one another, to love our neighbor as ourselves. And we must interact with others in love. And in the world, we must shine as lights in the world and display the life that was given to us, display the love that we have received of the Lord to now give it unto the world. Because if salt has lost its savor, it is no good. It is to be trodden at the foot. But we are called to be lights of the world in this corrupt generation. And so Paul is saying that he wants them to grow in knowledge, to continue to acquire more and more knowledge, and also in judgment. Why, brothers and sisters? Because as light bearers, we have to communicate truth to the world. But in order to do that, we need to be properly educated in the word. We need knowledge. And the knowledge that we have, it comes from the Lord. It is the wisdom that cometh from above. Because all good things come from the Father of lights. And so we need not the wisdom of this world, but the wisdom that the Lord giveth. And he gives wisdom to he who asks and abradeth not. And so we have to ask for that wisdom. And have unwavering faith, and we receive it. And so we should seek these things. And so Paul is praying for his brothers and sisters that they may grow in knowledge and that they may also grow in their ability to assess things and judge, not render judgment in the sense of condemning someone. That's the Lord's prerogative and only the Lord's prerogative, but in the sense of reproving things and assessing things to determine what is good and what is not, to determine good from evil. And in order to do that, we obviously need the knowledge to be able to discern things. The Bible says that the spiritual man can judge all things because he can discern things spiritually. Amen. And so as lights of the world, we're called to show this light, to be a beacon of light, to be a source of truth. And this truth, we teach the world having knowledge, having the wisdom of the Lord, being educated in his word. And we render judgment in that when we come to learn about the circumstances of others, we're able to assess their situation and to give them advice or to show them the way to deal with their situation based on biblical advice. And we render judgment in that we assess what they're going through and determine that which is good and evil, so that we can in turn render a judgment upon what they should be doing, what they are doing wrong, what they are doing right, and how to improve their situation and be strengthened. This is reminiscent of Exodus chapter 18, where Jethro met Moses and he told him, when people have issues, you don't necessarily have to hear all the matters. You can delegate that task. But when the matter is complicated, you can hear it yourself and render judgment. And so when we hear about other people's affairs and matters, 
and there are things that need to be settled, it takes knowledge to know about the moral laws and principles of the Lord set out in his word. Although the Lord, by his spirit and the anointing we have received, he teaches us these things. But we have to stay in his presence to be filled with his knowledge. And we can then render judgment, having come to understand a certain situation, and we can give it advice. We can settle a situation where there seems to be conflict. We can give advice about the best thing to do in a set of circumstances based on the advice and knowledge and wisdom of the Lord. Amen. And so this is the first aspect that Paul is praying for. I'm praying for you, brothers and sisters, that you may have knowledge and that you have the ability to render judgment in a wise way with the wisdom of the Lord, having knowledge of his laws and principles morally, understanding his justice by way of the Holy Spirit who dwells in you. Amen. And in verse 10, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Paul tells us that he has espoused us to Christ as a chaste virgin and that we are to remain without spot because we have received a clean garment, a white robe. And so we have to come to a point where we approve things that are excellent, meaning we touch not the unclean things so that we may be accepted. We do not partake in the evil ways of this world, but we continue to walk along the narrow path that leads to the straight gate, not being distracted, not looking to the left or to the right, but rather like Asael, turning neither to the left nor to the right, we run and chase after our goal, even at the cost of our life on earth, but knowing that we are running for a higher prize. And so in order to be crowned, we have to compete lawfully. And therefore, we need to be lovers of things that are good. Amen. And this is also something that Paul speaks about in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, when he says that whatsoever things are true, honest, just, and pure, lovely, of good report, these are the things that we should be seeking. And so this is echoed here in chapter 1, verse 10. We have to approve things that are excellent, that we may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, because holiness and sanctification are things needed to please the Lord and to see him. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 8, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. You see how by being holy and pure, by being holy as he is holy, by being pure and loving the things that are excellent, then are we able to preserve our garment and keep it clean so that we may found to be without blemish before the Lord. Amen. And it touches also this verse 10 on perseverance because it reads, till the day of Christ. And so we must run and maintain these good things. This inclination that we have, this desire that we have to approve things that are excellent, it must be sustained because we must run the good race and finish the course. Amen. And so there is perseverance. Here is the patience of the saints. We must be perseverant. And so in this verse 10, we touch on the desire and need to stay in sanctification and holiness, and at the same time, the perseverance over the course of the race that we're running. And in verse 11, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, unto the glory and praise of God. You see, brothers and sisters, the fruits of righteousness. We're touching on the issue of the fruits of the Spirit, spoken of in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And when we manifest these things, we are showing the world that we are rooted in the rock that is Christ, and that we as trees bear forth fruit. 
fruits that are pleasing to the Lord, fruits that also allow us to manifest the love and the light that we have to show the world, being loving to them and delivering truth to them and doing so by displaying goodness, gentleness, and peace and long-suffering in the trials that they will see us go through. Because let us not forget that in Hebrews chapter 12, we are told that we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. Now, the people around us do see the trials and tribulations that we go through. And when they see us persevering and having an ability to be long-suffering and patient in our trials, it also is a testimony to them that what we are rooted in is unmovable. Amen. And so here Paul is calling us to display these qualities, the fruits of the Spirit, which are a sure token that we have the Holy Spirit, that we have a godliness in us that we're able to display for the world to see, which touches on our role as light bearers, as lights in this world, in the image of the light with a capital L who came into this world and which was not received even by his own. But we have to still show this light while it is still day, because the night cometh where no man can work. And going back to verse 11 in Philippians chapter 1, the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ, it is by the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ that we're able to display these things and communicate this light and this truth to others by the manifestation of the godliness that we have received in us, that we have and that we are developing, being perfected to attain it. Remember that Peter, in 2 Peter chapter 1, he says, And beside this, giving all diligence and to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, knowledge, which touches on what we saw in Philippians chapter 1 verse 9, where Paul is saying, that we should have more and more knowledge and judgment. So back to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 6, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful, knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So you see that these things, including knowledge and including patience, temperance, godliness, all these things touch on the manifestation of the fruits of righteousness, the fruits of the Spirit. And once people see our good deeds this way, they will give glory unto God. They will not have a choice but to recognize our attributes and how we draw them from the divine nature of God and they will give glory to God. And this is how we connect to Philippians chapter 1 verse 11 where it reads unto the glory and praise of God. And so it is for the glory of God that we bear these fruits to show them and display them to the world that they may give glory to God by the witnessing of our conduct and our good deeds. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You see, brothers and sisters? And in Philippians chapter 1, verse 11, being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. Because when you're filled with these things, the fruits of the Spirit, and you manifest them, you're manifesting love to the world, and it will be unto the glory of God. Because the world will give glory to God by way of seeing the light that you shine and understanding that God is the source of it. At least those to whom it will be given. Amen. And so, brothers and sisters, by looking at these verses, Philippians chapter 1, verses 9 to 11, we see what Paul is praying about. Sometimes we wonder, what should I be praying about for my brother or my sister? 
they are going through difficult circumstances, the affairs of this world are weighing on them. Well, Paul is not necessarily praying for people to be rich. He's not praying for people to be popular. He's not praying for people to receive all the different gifts of the Holy Spirit, but he's praying for the essential things. That is, in verse 9, that they be able to play their role as a light in the world by having knowledge and an ability to render judgment in the sense of assessing things and differentiating good and evil and giving proper advice and guidance. And then he speaks in verse 10 about how we must persevere in the way of righteousness and holiness and be holy as the Lord is holy, because God is light and in him is no darkness. And that if we want to see him, we know that on that day, we will see him as he is and we will be like him. Amen. And so we have to strive for holiness, being a virgin, chaste, with a clean white robe, and to persevere in that way because we have to do it till the day of Christ. And we must have a love for the things that are holy and touch not the unclean things. And verse 11, manifest fruits of righteousness, manifest fruits of the Spirit, for the world again to see the love, the joy, the peace, the long-suffering, the patience, things which work unto godliness, so that we can be proper witnesses who not only deliver truth, by way of knowledge and judgment, but also give a testimony as to the source of these things in us, and that is the Holy Spirit, that is Christ in us. Oh, hallelujah! Magnificent. So that the world may see these things and give glory to the Lord. Do you not remember, brothers and sisters, how the Lord praised Job and was very proud to speak of him? In Job chapter 1, verse 8, And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? And so the Lord was proud to have Job on display and point to him to say, Here is a man who gives glory to me and to my name. Amen. And likewise, in being light of the world, the world has to come to glorify the name of the Lord by way of our behavior, by way of our ability to render judgment in knowledge and in a loving way. Because ultimately, everything is for the glory of the Lord, because he gives his glory to no one. And he does tell us in Malachi chapter 1, My name shall be great among the heathen, saith the Lord of hosts. And so the Lord cares about his name. He cares about the glory of his name amongst the Gentiles. And it is our mission to let the world know about the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, his greatness and his power to change us, to recapture the image that we once had, being in his image, being in holiness, being in righteousness, and not corrupt by the seduction and evil that is in this world, which calls evil good and good evil. And so this is the prayer of Paul for his brothers and sisters, and it is inspiring to us when we seek to pray one for another. May you be blessed, brothers and sisters, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen.